Let him cook. Mike James. Let him cook now. Le patron de la Rocket Team. I said let him cook. Mike James, on le cross. Et il le met. Mike James, quel move. Ah, il est terrible, Mike James. Il s'est réveillé ce matin. Il a choisi la violence. Ils vont oh, il est dur. Oh, qu'il est dur. Oh, oh il a pas droit. <rire> Mais il a pas Mais rien, droit. Rien n'est trop dur pour Mike James. C'est interdit de mettre un shoot comme ça. C'est lui, c'est maintenant, bien sûr Et un dernier plaisir Pour le général James Ah oui, bravo Hello Mike, how first of all, how was your summer What did you do for your free time um, For like the first month and a half, my summer was boring. I had back surgery, so I couldn't move a lot. Just felt like I was, like, I don't want to say handicapped because that might be disrespectful to handicapped people, but it just felt like I was immobile. Like, uh, it was just room, office, office, bed. It was just a lot of not moving around. I was supposed to walk like 10 minutes a day, like three times, so I walk around my neighborhood I couldn't walk fast, I couldn't like jump. I wasn't like able to like bend over and pick up nothing off the ground, which was probably the worst. So like when Uber Eats had come, I had to put like a table outside so they'll put it on the table so I didn't have to bend over and pick it up. It was just a lot going on, but uh, you know, it was a, a nice experience. It was uh, humbling. But then uh, the second half was a little bit more interesting. I got to go some places, got to do some things I had to do for, for myself and just, you know, enjoy some life. So the second half was better than the first half. You extended your contract for three years here in Monaco. Uh, what was the process of making that decision? It's a lot. I think, uh, obviously, uh, I hold myself in high regard as a basketball player. So obviously, um, you know, money is always a topic. First, role, money, where I'm going to live at, how it's going to be, uh, stuff of that nature. And just... Uh, After all that is sorted out, it's more about uh, how, where I want to be, you know what I mean? So uh, I think at the end of the day, I wanted to continue with Monaco because I, I feel like I started Monaco. Not arrogantly, but in EuroLeague, I started with Monaco. I was one of the people that was here. I feel like uh, I helped Monaco grow to another level, and uh, I didn't want to leave and selfishly either watch it grow without me or fall down without me. I, I kind of just want to uh, be able to grow with it and see where I can take it. And then whenever I decide to retire, if it goes up after that, it's fine, because I'm, I'm done. But I didn't want to uh, go away from it in the middle of uh, the growing process. So uh, it's kind of like, uh, like a little cousin. You know, you have a little cousin, you help it grow up until 21 and they go off to college, it's kind of like that. Uh, like always, there was lots of rumors about you living, going there, mm -hmm. <laughs> going there. Can you tell us what's so annoying about all of this for a player? Um, I think a lot of people just put stuff on to get clicks and they don't have no resources or any basis behind what they're saying. So uh, if it's truth, like if I do have an offer from them, it's fine. Like obviously you have a good source, you, you put it, whatever. But if you just tweeting nonsense and something that has no sense in fact uh, just because I'm a basketball player doesn't mean I should ignore it if a re if a regular person got tweeted about and somebody made up a lie about you you would want to defend yourself so I feel like uh, sometimes I need to respond and just say no nah, it's not true that's kind of a part of the world right now that that's really enjoyable yeah, people, any, anybody with a social media platform can just say anything about you and if you respond you're sensitive And if you don't, people believe it. So it's kind of like a lose-lose. Good thing I don't really care about what people say, so I can respond and whatever you think about me doesn't really matter. But, uh, you know, I like to keep mostly uh, truth out there, the most truth I can. So, you know, that's my approach. Uh, let's talk basketball. What do you think of um, this summer recruitment of Monaco? I think it's one of the best we had, personally. I think uh, maybe we've recruited better players before but I think it's the best we've had to fit into a team like to fill roles and to fit into certain spots that we needed and to try to put it all together I think uh, 
this is the first time I think that the, that we've tried to put together a full team instead of just like, oh, we need, we just want to get the best players we can and put it out on the court. Uh, I think the manager did a really good job this summer, and I, I'm really excited about the season. One of the players that came is Nick Kalaitis. Mm -hmm. uh, we know he's really smart player, great IQ, great vision, best uh, assist record in the um, Euroleague. Can you tell us something that he brings to a team that maybe people don't see? Or but Aside from basketball, because basketball, obviously, you see what happens, but just good vibes. I think he's always just a good time. He's He's happy. He's always cracking jokes with people. He's the life of the party, kind of. Not in like a bad way, but like a good way. Like he's he brings good energy to the room. He fills up a room just with his vibe and just kind of bringing a team together. Um, I kind of said yesterday we were having a talk. I've never seen him really not like a person or a person not really like him. You know what I mean? Like everybody kind of gets along with him. Everybody's kind of cool with him. He's just a, a, a good guy. It's important in a team, like in tough times, to have guys, guys like this. Yeah, especially on a team with me because I'm kind of not that guy. I'm kind of more of the hard nose. we need to play better, kind of yell at people guy. So you kind of always need a guy that's like the total opposite. So, I've, I mean, you know, in every, in every situation you have to have balance. And, uh, you know, it's kind of out of my DNA to be like the guy that's like super fun all the time and super happy and super, it's not really me, I'm more kind of about business. So it's really good to have somebody that's the total opposite that can balance out my, uh, you know. Yeah, I get it. My, uh, strictness at times and um, and if i'm not mistaken don't he hall was one of the guy you hang out a lot in this mm -hmm. team also jordan lloyd that left you were close to him i want to um, ask you something about uh, the aspect of that playoffs life uh, bonding with guys multiple years and the, then them leaving how hard is that aspect um i mean it's tough but it's a part of your job you know what i mean uh Situations evolve, players evolve, people want more, people need to go take advantage of what they got going on. I think uh, everybody's situation is different. Uh, for Jordan, I think he wanted to spread his wings a little bit more and prove that, you know, he could be healthy, he could play well in a situation where it's more focused on him, which is good. I mean, I, I think uh, he's a great player, and, and when he's healthy, he's, he's a really good player. So, uh, you know. Uh, happy for him and then Dante I think he just wanted to spread his wings a little bit take on more responsibility and uh, get more playing time I think here when you play on a team where uh, you're fighting to go to the final four every year and that's your goal uh, people get locked into roles and you, and you got to like do this to fit into the system so maybe taking a step back to a team that maybe isn't that high on the aspirations maybe their aspirations is just playoffs you get to play a little bit more and figure it out which doesn't mean that they don't have aspirations to go to the Final Four, but it's just, you know, it's not, it's not as projected at the beginning. So uh, just happy for both of them, happy that they're happy. Um, wish them all the best of luck and great health, and I uh, hope they play amazing except against us. <laughs> of course. Yeah. Uh, last one on your Twitter bio I saw. There is a rock, paper, scissors expert. Mm-hmm. Can you tell us what that's about? I was just bored. I, sometimes <laughs> I just say stuff just to just to see what people's reaction is. Uh, I'm alright at rock paper scissors. I'm really good at everything competitive, like cards, every sport, all that. Like if we got a bet about it, I'm gonna be okay. Like I'm not gonna be the worst. If we play whatever y'all like to play right in here, and I never played it, I'm not gonna be the worst person. I'm gonna compete for the for the for the win. Competitor, you get what I'm saying? So, but now um, I, I have to check it. See, if you are really an expert. That's See, I'm not really an expert. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Oh, that's what I'm trying to tell you. I'm okay, not really an expert, you but I'm gonna compete though, and, and you're not gonna just, you know, <laughs> okay, if we okay. all had a tournament in here, I'm not gonna be last. Okay. Top three. Okay, we're gonna make a tournament. How many people there? Six. <laughs> I might be top two. You never know. I'm gonna get into a good rhythm, and then you know what I'm saying. But I'm not an expert. Okay. Thank you, Mike. Wish you a great season. <laughs>